Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, got a little bit of usher, baby face, and Wina Morris of Boys to Men. And ladies and gentlemen, they's gonna be singing in my background as we talk about something. This is the empowerment series. So those of you who have arbitrations, we're talking about essential elements of an arbitration clause. This is called duty to respond. This document is located at the SACCOM PDF section of the website. Elements of a contract and the arbitration clause. Ladies and gentlemen, we've already taught you how to put together an arbitration agreement by doing a notice of change in terms of agreement and incorporating all of the elements that are listed here. You'll find temporary sample contracts. Pay attention at SAA Limited, Sam, Albert, Alvin, Limited, dot com. Hey, Bobby! Bobby Brown. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, once you have your previous contract, you don't have to prove there's a previous contract. The fact that you have a previous contractual relationship is your proof. So once you have your previous contract, want y'all to pay attention. The only thing you have to do is take one of those agreements, polish it up to fit your situation, and just send it out because it has all of these other elements already included. Okay, these are elements of a contract. There you go. Now I want y'all to pay attention to this. These are by her failure to respond to the moving party's argument in support of her dispositive motion. That's why we've added the interrogatories in the original notice and suit. Because if they don't respond to the interrogatory, interrogatories is interrogation. That's why you do an interrogatory. So you're interrogating them. Okay? And they have to respond under oath. That's why you got to make sure your questions are poignant. Okay? Next thing you know, an offeree, you, well, they're the offeree because they're the ones who originally made the original offer. So you have a previous agreement. Well, an offeree's silence is deemed to be consent to a contract when the offeree has a duty to respond to an offer. Petition, conditional acceptance is a conditional offer and fails to act in the face of this duty. Ladies and gentlemen, if they have a duty to respond, that's considered an act. Okay? Inaction does not constitute acceptance of an offer. Pay attention. That's what it's listed as. However, when they have a duty to respond, then it does constitute acknowledgement. But the contracts that we put together for y'all, guess what it says? You need to provide the following information. And they have a duty to provide that information because they're the custodian of record. If you fail to provide this information, then you accept the terms of this agreement. Then you have the three-day option to cure. If you fail to opt out within the three-day, 24-hour calendar day time limit, time frame, then you agree to the provision of this agreement. Okay? That's how the document was designed. The same document, the type of junk they give you, you're doing the exact same thing. The offeree's silence is deemed consent to the contract when the offeree's duty to respond and they fail to respond. Now, pay attention. We're going to do this with Bard. Okay, let's let's do this. Yeah, let's do this.
say silence or inaction does not constitute exception to the offer, there are exceptions to this rule when they have a duty to respond. That's the exception to the rule. See, mere silence, they don't have a right to respond to you just because you say you better respond to me. You have to put caveats and conditions on their response. Give them the option and make sure it's within the terms of the agreement and the requirement for them to respond. Y'all hold on a second, okay? Let's go ahead and go to Bard. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not connected to the internet. I turned off the Bluetooth. I got, I'm on airplane mode. Y'all see that airplane right there? So we won't be able to do Bard because I'm not taking it off airplane mode. Okay, I'm doing some things in the background and I need it to be uninterrupted by Bard and his stupidity because he's stupid. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, notice this one right here. Mere silence ordinarily does not amount to acquiescence or acceptance. However, if the relationship prior relationship, if the relationship between the parties is such that an offer is justified, pay attention, prior relationship, and the expecting a reply or the offeree is under duty to respond, silence is deemed as an acceptance. That's what y'all got to know. So you ain't got to prove your contract is valid. You just have to now go to small claims court. And get the contract Conditional acceptance deemed lawful. That's all you got to do. Now you can go get your, pay attention. Don't worry about the fact that a court has already said this or already said that. Get the contract valid under this right here. Duty to respond. All right? Now, this is the shortest of all the videos in this series, but this is for you people who have arbitrations and somebody told you arbitration was bull and didn't add up to nothing. This is how you kick them in the head. Now, we've already talked about this, already did videos on this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me reiterating the fact that we gave you the information you needed, gave you all the laws. We looked up the laws for you when we had uh, access to casetext.com. And we have other sites that we can use, but I choose to use BARD for the time being. Hey, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all have a coconut smile. We'll see y'all the next time. Goodbye, everyone.